Hello and welcome back to another EU4 to Hearts of Iron 4 achievement challenge. In today's video, we shall be getting definitely the Sultan of Rome. For this video, we will need to play as Turkey and gain control of Rome as well as Moscow. We also need control of Istanbul slash Constantinople, but we already have it. Let's get going. And so, for our first order of business, we shall need to become democratic, because I will want to join the Allies for this one, as we may take on both the Axis and the Comintern. Probably will, in fact. And I will need strong Allies in order to uh, complete the objective. And oh my god, never in my experience of playing Hearts of Iron 4 have I seen this happen. It would appear the Japanese Communists have risen up in revolt against the Emperor. I don't know what to make of this. It is quite a shock. And who the hell is this? The communist leader of Japan is the Japanese Danny DeVito, it looks like. And after what was a quick war, the emperor has remained in power. Japan is now blue, and it would appear that they now have the default focus tree, so we should probably expect a quiet game out of Japan from here on out. It seems there will be no land war in Asia this time around. Back closer to home, the Bulgarians have effectively committed suicide by declaring war on the Romanians. If we take a look here, we can see the Romanians have somewhere between, I don't know, twice to three times as many divisions as the Bulgarians, and they are already dying. And I guess because Japan can no longer attack China with its new focus tree, the Chinese got bored of waiting, and they decided to attack each other instead. But it's getting underway, Germany is now at war with the Allies, Italy is part of the Axis as well. And so we should begin to mobilize... ...right now. Woo, Turkey joined the Allies! Yay! Since the Royal Navy has already wrestled control of the Mediterranean away from the Italians, we can go ahead and send our troops over to France and Switzerland in an effort to begin to push back the Italians and take Rome for ourselves. The British also did me a favor by taking over Albania, and now Albania will serve as a nice staging point for a short little naval invasion into southern Italy. So Greece has joined the Allies after getting attacked, and I never thought I would see this day, but Greece and Turkey in the same alliance, fighting side by side. It's a beautiful sight. We did a nice, clean naval landing next to Toronto. I don't know when the Italians stole Canada City, but I'm here to give it back to them. So the Alpine Front has been pretty static thus far, but we do have some movement going on in southern Italy as we begin to spread out and take over some land. And Poland has actually just now capitulated. That is impressive. They held out for a very long time, but in the end, as usual, well, they died. F to pay respects, please. So I had not even noticed, but Poland's surrender meant Romania also surrendered. And now I am in desperate to get some troops out in order to prevent the Germans from storming into my country. I have four untrained divisions going up against the might of the German army to save Istanbul and my whole country. Uh... I should probably get a couple more divisions just in case. Really, Franco, you're gonna let Italy demand the Balearic Islands from you? I mean, like, they're not really a threat to attack you at the moment. Come on, Franco, I'm disappointed. Right, let's get uh, more meat out for the meat grinder. You know, this noob spam tactic is actually quite effective. In fact, I've even had four divisions kill enough Germans to become at least trained. And it's it, they're holding out pretty well. Uh, surprisingly. Southern Italy had turned into a stalemate for a while, but now these Italian divisions in this little boot peninsula thing have started moving south to retake Sicily. So we'll follow them down and hopefully get some more movement again. In the Alps though, still no movement. In fact, uh, let's just everyone stop attacking because you're just like running on falling off cliffs and dying and it's it's pretty worthless. But my southern Italian plan has panned out well, and we now have caught quite a few Italian divisions in between a Turk and a hard place. 
in the form of Australia. And finally, after the Great Battle of Istanbul, my troops have become so well trained and the Germans have depleted their manpower and resources to the point where I can finally go back on the offensive. We finally have movement down in southern Italy again in what has turned out to be an all-out Mediterranean melee between the pasta men and the kebabs. And now all across the Balkans, the Turks and the Greeks, and some other guys as well, have managed to put aside their differences and all come together to defeat the sausage eaters. But perhaps most importantly, we have finally have broken through in the Alpine front, and now Turkish and French troops are just pouring into the Po Valley. Acting as the salami in the middle of a Turkish and French sandwich, the Italians are close to capitulating. Rome has now fallen, and there they go. The Italians are out of the war, and we are one step closer to becoming rum lords. So we may as well head up into Germany and help out our Dutch friends defeat the Germans and end the war once and for all. At this point, Germany has now basically been conquered and are only breathing because of a few cities in Austria. So I'm gonna bring this army back down and form a spearhead and we can take Vienna, avenge 1683, and finally finish this war. And war is done. Let's take a look at this peace deal here. France has not taken Rome. And so that means we can secure our first objective of the achievement. Turkey in control of Rome. I bet that it triggers many Italians right there. Unbeknownst to me, I was so busy with the war I was fighting, I never even realized the Soviets declared war on Afghanistan, who are actually winning. I mean, look at this KD ratio they got. That is incredible. But we should go ahead and get our justification going for the Soviet Union, as we need Moscow. Now, who shall we justify for? Obviously, it's going to be Armenia, because what kind of Turkish player would I be if I were to leave the Armenians alone? Time to get World War II Part 2 underway. And uh, Yugoslavia and Greece are the first two to answer my call to arms. Go figure. We got some nice pushes going across the whole line, all the way from the Caucasus Mountains up into the Baltic region. And we're making good progress here. Once we pinch off this little gap here in the Soviet lines, Armenia will be back under our control. And I think we all know what's coming next. A declaration of friendship and an aid program meant to help the Armenian citizens recover from communism under the Soviet Union. The push forward continues, again, all the way across the line, up from the Baltics, down to the Caucasoid Mountains. And we have surrounded more Soviet divisions. This war is going much easier, actually, than the last one. I now find myself up in Finland, though, with winter fast approaching, and we all know what happened last time Finland was invaded during the winter. But it would appear this time around I have won, and Finland is dead. And looky here, 26 or so divisions surrounded of the Soviets, and they are all about to enjoy a nice holiday in a Turkish internment camp. And over here we got over like 40 divisions surrounded now, we're about to have as many Soviet prisoners as I do in my whole army, just about. And losing so many troops has wound up costing the Soviet Union. They are done. And we are in the peace deal. Let's go ahead and grab Moscow, thus completing our objective. And looky here. We have Moscow. We have Rome. And we already owned Istanbul. And we are definitely now the Sultan of Rum. That's the end of the video. I didn't even have to cheat this time. But I look forward to seeing you again. Have a nice day. Now get out of my sight.